So a little while ago, I did a video on the Keychron Q1, and I talked about how it's one of the best custom keyboards under $200. And I said that Keychron was really doing some great things in bringing custom keyboard features and build quality to a much more entry-level uh, price point and really allowing people to kind of get their feet wet in terms of custom keyboards. Well, since then, they've released a new line, the V-Series, which are even more entry level. They bring down the price a lot, and I think these are actually gonna be the perfect budget entry level custom keyboards. And today, we're gonna to be opening up the Keychron V1. So between the Q series and the V series, what are the similarities? They both support QMK and VIA. They both have south-facing RGB LEDs. Uh, they're both hot swappable PCBs. They both have a sound absorbing foam between the plate and the PCB. They both have knob and knobless options. They both use the double shot PBT keycaps from Keychron. They both support Mac and Windows. And they both use screw in stabilizers. Now the major differences between the Q and the V series is that the Q series is gasket mounted and the V series is tray mounted. Gasket mounting allows for a much more flexible board that is a lot more comfortable to type on and helps absorb a lot of sound as well. Whereas the V series is directly connected to the tray, which makes it a lot more stiff. Um, and it comes with its own things, but we have a mod actually to help alleviate this downside. The V series also has Keychron's switches instead of the Gateron Pro switches that the Q series has. Um, we're going to listen to what they sound like because I got this board here with the Keychron Browns, but I got my Q series with the Gateron Browns, and we're going to test them both in here and see what they sound like. And the most notable difference between the two is that the V1 and the V series in general uses an ABS chassis uh, instead of a full aluminum CNC chassis that the Q series does. This is going to change the sound profile, it's going to drastically change the weight, and we're going to see if it's a major hindrance or not. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this board unboxed. So here we are, we got our box here, so let's open this thing up. And we got our quick start guide, um, which talks about how the board comes configured for Mac right out of the box. So you got to switch a few of the keycaps around. Um, and then it's got a few of the hotkeys right there for the layers and the RGB and VIA. Very handy tool telling you about um, basically making sure your pins are straight before switching them out on the hot swap. So always keep that in mind. User manual. And we got our board. Let's go ahead and get this thing out. And there we go. I have the smoked uh, chassis, which means it's semi-translucent. Looks pretty good. They're using the same color uh, as the Q-Series keycaps. Not a huge fan of them, but uh, they sound decent. You can actually see the silicone... Um, padding underneath here that's going to help absorb some of the sound and make it sound a little less hollow. Uh, and the same kind of style screws as the Q-Series, which is nice. You also have uh, these feet here, so you have three levels. You have flat, you have small, and then you have large. So that's not bad. We also get our puller. We get the same cable that came with the Q-Series, USB-C to USB-C with a USB-C to USB-A adapter. You get a switch puller, you get some extra screws and a screwdriver, and we get our spare caps. So if you are going to be using this for Windows, you're going to want to pull the Mac keys off. Get our Windows keys on. And then also, you're going to want to change the switch right here to Windows mode. And that's it. So as I mentioned, one of the big differences between the V-Series and the Q-Series is the ABS plastic and how that weight is going to be a huge difference. Just picking up the box, you can tell that there's a big weight difference. 
So I have my scale here. If we go ahead and turn that thing on. The V is just over one kilogram, 1,010 grams. Now, if we go ahead and grab my Q series, it is more than double in terms of weight. So if you do want a more portable board, these are gonna be a much better option for carrying around with you. Um, and obviously, this is not a very portable board. It is extremely heavy, but it feels real good. So now that we've got that opened, let's go ahead and do a completely stock sound test. So now that you know what it sounds like, let's quickly go over some of the pricing. So the fully assembled version is $84 and the bare bone is $64, which I think is an absolute incredible price for this keyboard. If you want the knob versions for either, it's going to add $10 to the price. You have the frosted black, which is the semi-translucent, which is what I have here. And then we have the carbon black, which is entirely non-translucent or non-transparent, sorry. Now that we know what the keyboard sounds like entirely stock, we're actually going to be doing one mod to this keyboard, and that's actually going to be the O-ring mod. What this mod is going to do is it's going to replicate basically a very simple gasket mount, and it's going to help clean up the sound profile of the keyboard a little bit and help it sound a little less empty. We're going to take a look at what this mod sounds like with the regular Keychron switches, and then we're going to look at how it sounds like with the Gateron switches as well, so you can figure out if you want to get this board with those switches or not. All right, so we're going to disassemble this so we can do the O-ring mod. Um, so just flip it right over, take these screws out. All right, so once you've got those eight screws out, you can go ahead and take the plastic front plate off. And there's going to be 12 screws you're going to need to remove. You're going to need to remove a couple of keycaps to get to the, some of those screws. So you're going to have to remove these and remove these. as well as some of the keys in the middle. All right, so my hands are now entirely broken from pulling all these keycap or switches out of this board and switches out of my other board that had the Gateron Pro Browns in there. Uh, you can get a better look at those 12 screws now, and we're gonna go ahead and take this apart. So now that we got those 12 screws out, we can go ahead and take out these little bronze screws on the back, and those are going to separate the plate and the PCB. So the only screws you need to remove are the three up top and the three right here. So to make the mod a lot easier, you can go ahead and put your screw through the metal plate, like so. Grab your O-ring. So once you go ahead and put the O-ring through the screw like that, it'll hold the screw on as well. And that just makes it a lot easier to put it back together and have the O-rings on the outside screws. These are the spots that you want the O-rings to be on, so the th four up top and then the three on the bottom. Now we can go ahead and put the foam back on. Make sure the foam goes around your O-rings. Line this back up. So now that we've got the plate and the PCB back all together, um, we're gonna go ahead and get this back onto the bottom casing. So yeah, so the O-rings go on these four up top and then these three on the bottom. 
And we don't want to overly tighten them because that will basically negate the benefit of the gaskets. So just go hand tight until it becomes a little, little tough. Also, because this uh, the tray that you're screwing into is plastic, I highly suggest counter rotating your screws um, until they seat nicely inside of the plastic threads, and then threading them down so that you don't cross thread it by accident. So now that we know how the board sounds, both with the O-ring mod and without it, and the stock switches, we're going to go ahead and switch in the Gateron Pro Brown switches that I have for my Q3. So if you just want to see the difference between the two switches, the Keychron ones are a box style. Um, the Gaterons are a regular stem style. Um, RGB-wise, they seem about the same. The Keychron ones actually may allow a little bit more light through because their plastic seems a little bit more translucent, but um, yeah. Those are the two switches. We're going to be putting all these in there, and I'll show you that when it's done. So in comparing those clips, I really do think that the O-ring mod does improve the stock board quite a decent bit, especially for how inexpensive the mod is to do and how simple it is. However, I do very much prefer how it sounds with the Gateron Pro switches in there instead of the regular Keycon Browns. Um, but that's all going to be up to personal preference, what you think sounds good, what you think doesn't sound good, and what you want to spend money on. Getting VIA set up on this board is the exact same process as the Q3. You download the JSON that they have on the product page because this isn't part of the official VIA GitHub yet. Um, you load it in through design, and then you can go to configure and you can change everything that you want. This also allows you to change the colors and the RGB, any of the key mapping, any of the macros that you want. VIA is such a great UI for QMK. It makes things a lot more simple, so you don't have to learn how to code in QMK. So, what are my overall feelings about the V1? I think this is such an incredible step towards bringing features from custom boards into a much more entry-level, beginner-friendly price point. I think this is a great starting point for a lot of people who want a higher quality keyboard um, that doesn't have a bunch of gimmicky features on it. It's just there to perform as well as possible. I do, however, feel like the bare bone is probably going to be the best choice for a lot of people. That way you can choose your own switches because the Keychron switches have a lot to be desired. They're not as great as I would like them to be. And I personally am not a huge fan of the Keychron keycap colorway. I'm not a huge fan of it. They sound pretty decent for what they are, but I'm not a huge fan of the color style. So for the extra 20 bucks that you would spend on the fully assembled versus the barebone, you can get a really great set of switches, whichever ones that you like. 
Uh, if you did want, you can buy the Gateron G Pro switches directly from Keychron. You get 110 switches for 20 bucks, so you can get whichever one of the ones that you want there. And you can buy a nice keycap set that really fits the colorway that you want your keyboard to be. Now, if you don't mind the sound of the Keychron switches and you don't mind the look of these keycaps, it's available to you an extra $20 over the bare bones. It's right there. Take it out of the box and you can get straight to using it. Now, the release window for other sizes. Keychron has done such an incredible job of starting a series and then releasing another size within that series within a month, sometimes within the same month. And I believe that the other sizes for this are going to really start to come out. And I'm really looking forward to the TKL version. TKL is my favorite form factor personally. Um, so if the 75% isn't what something that you want and you want the 60 you want the TKL, you want the 96%. The Q series has the 75%, the 65%, the TKL, the 60%, the 1800 compact, the 100%, the 70%, an Alice layout, and they have a numpad. They also just announced the pre-launch for their 40%. So they are putting out a ton of sizes for these boards. I really hope that they do the same for the V-Series, and I don't doubt it if this board sells as well as the Q-Series has, because the Q-Series was an incredibly built board. I'm really happy with it. It's basically ruined all of the keyboards for me lately. Um, but this V-Series is an incredible beginner option. I really do think a lot of people are going to like it. And if you do like the 75% form factor, this is an incredible thing to jump on and buy. I'm really happy with it. The O-rings that I bought were very minimal in terms of cost. They cost me less than $10, and it got me hundreds of them, so I can use them for other keyboards if I want. And I already had spare keycaps. I have spare switches that I can use, so I can get this board however I want it to feel. And I think I'm actually going to be using this as my main work keyboard, whereas my Q-Series is going to be my main desk keyboard for my gaming computer. And that's it. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed. All of the support allows me to actually spend the money and buy these keyboards for myself because these do not get sent out to me. So thank you to everybody who supports me, especially my patron sponsors, Thought Slime, Step Back, and Rosa Son of Dojo. Also, thank you for watching the end of this video. If you do want to check out my Q-Series review, you can go ahead and check it out right here where I reviewed the Q3 and I talked about how much I enjoyed it and what I liked about it and what I disliked about it. I did a few mods on there as well. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Friday.